the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. There's that word tried again, a trial. We're going to be tried. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. He says, for Some of you shall be cast into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Jesus said he will give us a crown of life, but who is that for? It's for those that are faithful unto death. That's endurance. Those that endure and those that are faithful, those that last. As it says there in the book of James chapter 1, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised. To who? The Lord hath promised to them that love him. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. It's not what the world would think, is it? You know, and many even in the church, you know, the, the word blessed is to mean to make happy, to be happy. One should be happy when they endure temptation, when we're tried, when we're faced with temptations, but more specifically when we endure temptations. And the word says here, for when you are tried, when he is tried, that man that endureth temptations is blessed. He says, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. You know, there's so much wrapped up in this one verse of scripture right here. For it says that when that man is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. And I looked a little bit tonight in the word of God, Revelation chapter 2. Verse 10, it says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. There's that word tried again, a trial. We're going to be tried. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. He says, for Some of you shall be cast into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Jesus said he will give us a crown of life, but who is that for? It's for those that are faithful unto death. That's endurance. Those that endure and those that are faithful, those that last. As it says there in the book of James chapter 1, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to who? The Lord hath promised to them that love him. The question is, folks, do you love Jesus? That's who the crown of life is promised to. It's promised to those that love him. And how do you know that you love Jesus? How can anyone know that we love Jesus? Well, the book of John Chapter 14, in the words of Jesus himself, down at verse 15, he says, If you love me, he said, if, that's a stipulation, it means it sets a condition. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you love Jesus, you will keep his commandments. Now, if you don't love Jesus, what, what's it fair to say that you will not keep his commandments? And Jesus said, you shall receive a crown of life, those that endure temptation. You shall receive a crown of life, which is promised to those that love him. And if you love him, you will keep his commandments. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. For every man is tempted, get this, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You notice the scripture says there that every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust 
and his own lust entices him to sin. This is very much in line with Scripture back in Genesis. There in the garden when man fell, when woman was tempted, when she was, uh, when she was enticed, subtly by the beast, the serpent, the devil, who tempted her and subtly deceived her, and she ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then her husband ate, he ate willingly. He broke the commandment of God. And what's the scripture say that when God came to them, that Adam blamed God for his sin? Adam said, it is this woman that you gave to me. She caused me to eat. So you see, not only did Adam place the blame of that sin upon the woman, but also on God, because he said, on whom you gave me. And then, of course, the woman, Eve, she blamed her sin upon the serpent, upon the devil, as many of you are in the habit of doing today. You see, some blame God, just like Adam, and some blame the serpent, the devil, which Eve did, but not a lot of people will own up to their own sin and understand that it was their own lust, that they were drawn away by their own lust and enticed to sin. It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and he's enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do you see the progression there, folks? There is a progression. And everything in context, friends, when you're reading the Word of God, context is key. To understand the context of everything, just as there's a progression there of your own lusts, that when you're tempted, you're drawn away by your own lusts and enticed. And when that lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Just as there's a progression there, folks, there's also a progression back here in James chapter 1-3. It says, knowing this, well, go back one verse to verse two. It says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. It means different temptations. Count it joy. What's to be joyful about when you're tempted? Well, it's the trying of your faith. So we'll find out here. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. There's a progression. When your faith is tried and you endure, it works patience within you. But let patience have her perfect work, her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You mean to tell me, preacher, that you can be perfect? You can. There's a perfecting of the saints. The Bible talks about it with the fivefold ministry, that the fivefold ministry is for the perfecting of the saints. The Bible talks about the Word of God perfecting the saints, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. And just as the fivefold ministry is there to perfect the saints and just as the word of God is here to perfect the saints, so is the trying of our faith to perfect the saints. Because it says it worketh patience and let patience have a perfect work. So many don't want to let patience have a perfect work. We lose patience long before that time and lose out on the reward. Let her have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, friends, we're all tried and we're all tempted. The Bible says that Christ like as we are. He was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Did you know that Christ was tempted with sin? To be tempted is not to be, uh, to be sinful. To be tempted is not to do wrong. Every man is tempted. Even Christ was tempted, but he did not yield. The problem with man is we yield to the lust of our flesh and we're enticed, and that lust conceives and brings forth sin, and sin brings forth death. 
But there's a key in the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, Therefore have no temptation com uh, taken you, no temptation has taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. That's an old archaic word. Suffer means he won't allow you to be tempted above that you're able. You'll be able to handle it when you're tempted. God will ensure that. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Friends, he will, with that temptation, make a way of escape that we wouldn't yield to sin, but we would be able to endure and bear that temptation. I've been tempted, I've been tried, been tested. It's my desire to always endure temptation and receive that crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. And I love him because the Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if we love Christ, we will keep his commandments. We will always strive to keep his commandments. But friends, when you're tried, when you're tempted, turn to Jesus, turn to the word of God. Look to his word, look to his will, find out what his will is, know his will, and be obedient to his word. And then maybe you'll receive that crown of life to those who he has promised, to those who love him. Love Jesus, folks. One day we will all stand before him and give account of all that we've done. On that day he will say to the faithful, enter in to the joy of your Lord. For the Lord delights in the death of His servants We will see Him arise with healing in His wings With arms open wide in all heaven rejoicing Surrounded by His love will enter